I want to I want to mention the fact that my coat of arms is yes. uh, the Lamont coat of arms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the western coast of Scotland is where we were located. The two men holding clubs. That actually yeah. signifies the wolf. There are right. two men holding clubs. There's symbolical connections, which is elaborated on that book I was talking about. It, it, it uh, connects to Orion. Connects to right. A, yeah, it connects to, and Orion is connected to Lepus, the the dog star, or the dog constellation for Sirius. Sirius. Right. The three the three stars <laughs> of the belt of Orion point to Sirius. It lines up with Sirius. Um, this is something. Like, that- you basically want, have yeah, Orion. Go, go <laughs> yeah, you basically have Orion and his dog. Um, coat of arms. Yeah, and the coat yeah. of arms has a hand on the top. Yes, right. The hand of Nuwada, right? The the silver hand. Is that right? Oh, am I getting that wrong? Uh, Michael Tessarian tends to attribute it to the Atenist hand. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, the red hand. However, of, uh, however Ulster, of Ulster, right? The red hand of Ulster. Yes, which goes yeah. goes back to the pharaoh Aya. Aya. Uh, however, yeah. this uh this coat of arms was crafted at a later date and considering the contact with the Norse and the Irish, which my clan certainly had, I think that the hand was three different things. It was giving recognition to the Atonists. It was giving recognition to Nuwada. And I think it was giving recognition to Tyr, who raised the wolf. Of course, Tyr. Now the Tyr. third thing... Tyr. Yeah. Raise the wolf. Third thing is the lion shield in the middle. And the this lion in particular actually looks like a comet with its mane. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I really love the style of this lion. Uh, it's not like a lot of lions I've seen. And the mane flows back... Uh, it's really long, and it looks like this comet with this, with this wavy tail. So, you have the, you have the wolf connection on all three parts. I even think that the lion itself on this on this shield, kind of looks like a werewolf, but if it weren't a lion. Getting back to, uh, Je- I also think that it's connected to if Jeffrey Walensky's theory is if anything to go off as well. How it fits so beautifully into Commons Bo- Beaumonts, I think, you know, it, if we imagine Earth as an evol- fully evolved star, you know, as, as a very old star that has, has lost its heat and, and magnetic field through millennia of, of shedding. And um, I, I think that's something else they don't want us to realize, because it, once we realize that this planet wasn't just a, a random bombardment form, formation, wasn't just a collection of of rocks in space gathering, you know, and, and, and collecting, and then suddenly, you know, the, the gravitational pull pulls in more to make a sphere. Once you realize that, no, it, we already were a sphere, and that's why the moon's a sphere, and that's why all the pla- other, all the rest of the planets are, are variations on the sphere. I, I think, you know, once we figure that out, we also figure out the origin of this fall archetype, the, the you know, they want to keep that occult, right? Because if they keep that very basic archetypal origin story, if you like, um, occult, hidden, inaccessible, that, that gives them a lot of power over that symbol, over that archetype, and they can use it whenever they like. You know, they can, preachers can preach on their, from their altars about uh, the fall of Lucifer and how, you know, we're, we're, if, we're, if we're not good, we're, we're, we're doomed to damnation. The, you know, uh, things like Irish that. Had a better very military. basic, but also how so, they'll, they'll tell you about it, media. though. They'll tell you about it in movies, don't they? Mm-hmm. In TV shows. Like uh, in, in, in this TV show done by, uh, written by Neil Gaiman. There's this, uh, it's called American Gods. And in it, they show the god Lou fighting Baylor of the evil eye. And they show him triumphantly beheading him just like in this bloody gory uh, threnody. But yeah, in this frenzy. And um, I think they tell you about 
these great battles and uh, just how ferocious the ancient heroes had to be and, and how strong, uh, how much integrity they had to have to be able to, and, uh, and how healthy they must have been compared to how we are now in these cities, just how much uh, we have lost, we've sacrificed to be able to have these uh, super high-tech settlements. Yeah, and think about it, in a tribe, your tribe had a territory, um, you had access to that entire territory. Whereas a modern, you have to pay rent so you can park your car in your driveway and then your house is, I don't know, 40 by 40 feet, uh, 1600 square feet. That's your house and you have a job. So your domain is 1600 square feet with a yard and you can drive to work and however big your job is, if it's a little building, if you're a cashier, whatever you happen to be, that's your domain now. Like, less than a quarter of a square mile. For a lot of fucking people, um, that's their domain. Wow. You know, we've really progressed. No, yeah. Uh, pod, the, the phrase pod people comes to mind. Just thinking about this heroic mindset as well. I, I, I don't want to move away from this. I want to press on it. Just look, look at the movies, um, Conan the Barbarian, that film Krull. Was it Krull? Films like that, cheesy films where generic hero with long flowing blonde hair and big muscles. I mean, what an incredible intro to that movie. What happens? Okay, so there's a comet and you can clearly see the basaltic columns in it. It's like this huge, colossal boulder of basaltic columns and then it lights up and you see the, the engines of a ship so this thing is not only a comet but it's also an alien ship and okay so look at the metaphor there it's an alien ship but it's also a comet this thing when it, it landed it must have been like an alien thing that came down and when when the destruction was wrought it changed the people irrevocably and then it must have seemed like it was turning other people alien or even alien invaders were coming in, which were probably bandits just searching for food or searching for territory in the same traumatized mindset as them. But just that idea that this comet came and it brought aliens or brought an alien psychology with it and it infected this planet, right? Because this thing uh, lands when it collides. Uh, the Pythagorean mathematics yeah. is uh, kind of based in a system of math which takes zero out of the equation. The concept of zero is very important because um, all of these esoteric traditions are linked up to uh, pre-cataclysm. So like the tarot, it uh, actually talks about the, ca uh, the cataclysm. The full card, the reason he's about to walk off the cliff, that's it. That's actually talking about the cataclysm because uh, the cliff, it's like he's returning to his home, but the home isn't there anymore because of the cataclysm. So now it's just a cliff. You get the idea of like lemmings. Uh, Michael Desarian has talked about this. The reason the lemmings run off the side of a cliff is because they have that ancestral memory where they would run to these lands that used to be oh, there. Right. So they're, right. Okay. They're running on instinct. Uh, there's something in their in their brain that says, run in this direction, this is where we're supposed to go. Because there used to actually be land there, but now it's just a cliff with ocean at the bottom. And they all run off a cliff. Uh, so you got the full card. Full, full card is card number zero. Talking about how when the axis of the earth was straight up and down, every day was the equinox. There was no cycle yeah. of the seasons. There was no life, death, rebirth cycles. Zero was the orbit of the sun every day, making it zero in the sky. Well, I've been looking at uh, Norse versions of the tarot, and um, let me just get this uh, title up here. The Norse tarot gods, sagas, and runes from the lives of the Vikings by Clive Barrett. And the fool card is Balder, and Balder is the sun. And as you know, I have a series called The Fall of Loki, where I postulate that Lucifer, otherwise known as Balder, was a reference to Earth once being a sun. Also, 
and I think also like that is something that is really unfathomable for people to imagine that this planet was once us, a solar body and yet that you know the fool card in the Norse tarot is Balder and in the very beginning you know the sun god I just think it's it fits in rather nicely where where do you uh get that did common spell month say that oh, earth was sun oh earth was the sun I got that got this from a renegade astrophysicist called Jeffrey Wilinski and uh, Bill Gates another renegade physicist introduced me to this theory so that just going back to the beginning of time I did that this is what you you um, you brought up the fool and you brought up this idea of um, the, the zero and zero not being a thing right and it's immediately my, my, my brain went well is it nothing or is it the whole is it the everything you know rather yeah yeah well uh, when you take zero out of the system I guess I guess it fractals and I guess uh it's the axis of the tilt of the earth takes zero out so the tilt the wobble the moon all of this fractal stuff it's it's as a result of um the cataclysm and yeah uh it's crazy it's crazy man i couldn't say but uh the way that the solar system is now there's too much fractal geometry going on for that to be a coincidence and you know if the moon really is hollow and it's only just a very thin crust and it's plasma the thunderbolts of the gods people say that basically jupiter is hollow too say that, that those gases are just sort of like uh it's just a surface right right so, uh, this I hollow thing face. and uh, and I zero face. being important <laughs> i was just thinking yeah hollow moon hollow earth zero uh william blake his primordial man i think it's albion this outstretched man with this very innocent look on his face like this technicolor rainbow emanating from him and it's supposed to be like primordial man man before the cataclysm like i get these ideas i'm fascinated by william blake's work as well especially uh, his fascination with comets and meteors and people don't realize just how uh, fascinated this guy was almost on, on the same level as Commons Beaumont but this Albion this primordial man that William Blake paints and then you see the picture of Balda and he's very much in this pose where he's very free very very um, free-spirited and innocent and um, you know chin up high and, uh, and full of uh, prospects and and and, and uh, vigor also the images of the fool it shows us what man was you know gives us hints about what man was before the cataclysm you know which is is almost as unfathomable as trying to remember when when earth was once a sun yeah oh well, it's like uh kid uh, like kids they just naturally play but as adults we don't play we're, we're just serious you know it's like that got trained out of us progressively so I'm just like, laughing there's, because, uh, there's, no, there's no reason why it couldn't just be, you know, a good time all the time. It's like uh, shit got trained out of us, man. It's like not our natural state to be. I, I know we're not supposed to be talking about personal details, but it's my son's first birthday today. And um, it's amazing because I didn't realize how playful I was until I picked up my child and just how natural it comes to me and uh, play, playing with them and just playing games with them, making everything into a game it's such a wholesome feeling and you also you get a sense of just how sad people are you know when you're around that kind of innocence adults on an everyday basis it's a pretty sad situation and you know i hope hope i can bring him out of that lift him up out of that somehow but uh anyway getting back to it you know yeah but i, I do very much see him as like a little balder you know this uh blonde haired blue haired boy uh <laughs> and and uh He's rocking on his rocking horse. It just reminds me of the sun card, you know, this little golden boy on, on this uh, white horse, you know. But um, anyway, but yeah, primordial man and how we romanticize that, how, how, how William Blake romanticized that and how, how we wish we could return to that. But also this great cataclysm and not just that. Also, let's look at other theories as well. Alien interference. Let's not rule out this whole Krull 
thing where there could have been aliens hitching a ride on these comets who knows or maybe it was just this injection of alien energy this collision that came down and sort of caused the triggering of a metamorphosis of primordial man into the heroic being that existed in places like ancient Ireland and ancient Britain at large in Scotland etc uh, oh, uh, I, I have a post on vanhelsinglibrary.com called the wild man oh oh yeah yeah i, I love that post yeah. by the way this would be a post cataclysm man and you look at these uh these men they're very stern yeah it's like they're they've reclaimed paradise the northern lands this is the people who got back to the north after the cataclysm yeah. reclaimed it, retamed it but they're not it kind of is the full <laughs> image the fool has his stick, the wand. That's right. Uh, but these guys are holding the stick, but it's a club. Club, yeah. Yeah. They don't have this uh, paradisical, carefree expression on their faces anymore. It's no. Stern. It's like that. It's like that. The Who song, right? It's like, uh, you won't get fooled again. Yeah. You know, it's like we we know what's up. We know we know what's coming. We're ready for it. Yeah. We have to be ready for it. Yeah. You know, only I guess the Who song's more ironic, right? Because it's uh, uh it's, it's yeah, it's, in this day and age, it's more ironic because uh, people say that to themselves all the time, and yet time and time again they are fooled. Yeah, or the, or the <laughs> attitude of "I won't get fooled again" actually becomes an obstacle for them to even experience good again because yeah. they're they just expect they presuppose that everything's full of shit so they just project that and eliminate the possibility that they'll even experience something good again but oh, i had another thought okay I'm, oh yeah my my coat of arms yeah uh, the first one on on the page is my coat of arms, uh, the Lamont coat of arms. You see two dudes standing there. The one on the left has a really stern look on his face. The one on the right has sort of a softer expression, and he's looking okay. at you. Uh, uh, he's looking at you with a soft expression, mm -hmm. but the guy on the left is looking at him with a hard expression. It's like, it's like they've reclaimed their bit of paradise back after the cataclysm they're holding their ground the one on the right wants wants to share it but the one on the left is like advising caution be like you know maybe maybe but you know be be careful be watchful so obviously everybody wants to get back to paradise but who wants to who wants to share it the, the roman god Giannis, by the way is very much depicted like that and has uh, one sort of look young looking naive face and one older looking wiser expressioned face and um, he was also the god of beginnings he was also a fool archetype that was used by the romans um, when they were absorbing a lot of mediterranean deities and also ours but yeah this idea also that of being weary about what can come the conquering hordes not just like, like the, because of the cataclysms the psychology it affected everybody and it turned i don't know if you've seen uh, the 13th warrior with antonio banderas where he teams up with a bunch of nordic vikings and take apart an ancient goddess cave cult cannibal cave cult and um they go in and they just they look at these things like they're demons they act they, they talk about them as if they've been taken over by a demon the queen the the tribal the head priestess they they basically have to kill her to kill the tribe the way that this tribe went was completely corrupt and it took these heroes to arise to wipe that out and to clean it out like the white blood cells of the immunity of, of, of a human body um i've had a great discussion man we i could keep talking about this all night talk about it for the next hundred years man but i would be very proud of your coat of arms there's something very deep in there it's very William Wallace, there's something Herculean, Herculean about it that describes the mentality of um, someone who'd been affected by these cataclysms. They had to, had to become heroic, but it also affected their ability to be happy and to function and to live long and prosperous lives. But I, th I think it also 
it made human experience that much richer having having those experiences where glory was attained where security was earned where people weren't afraid to fight for what they saw was the, their right to have their own land their own space to breathe and not be charged like we are now not not be taxed like we are in the very air the very space that we use and breathe the heritage the antiquity of your it goes back to uh, my name actually it goes back to very old anglo-saxon language meaning strong sturdy the hardest that's what what my surname refers back to actually so i know what it's like and i can uh, i can relate heritage is very important